Hello ESA, hello SpeedFam. We're gonna play some classic Tomb Raider, and for that occasion I also brought out a classic runner. Yeah, uh, hello, I'm Edgott, I used to play this game. A while ago. Oh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna actually jump straight in, so we're gonna start in three, two, one, go. And we're gonna start at the Great Wall of China. Uh, so we're gonna climb stuff in a slightly unconventional ways, hopefully. Yeah, as uh, all the classic Tomb Raider games 1 to 5, uh, this is a very blocky game and a lot of the speed technique is based on abusing the block structure of this game. So if you get into a corner, uh, the game tries to put you on top of it because it doesn't, like, it doesn't allow you for to be inside objects. Exactly. Now, sometimes we can get stuck in like out of bounds ish territory, which is not good in most cases. Um, but yeah, so the main thing we want to do is kind of abuse that fact that we get pushed out on top of, of geometry. And what we also want to do is jump a lot because jumping is the fastest way of movement. Uh, there was no running yet in, in this game. Um, so usually we kind of want to do running jumps. But obviously every running jump is kind of a commitment since we can't interrupt it mid-jump. So sometimes we could jump into our doom, which we want to avoid. Yeah, um, yeah go ahead. Yeah, a lot of the movement is uh, planned out and like how many steps you take uh, until you take a jump or not a jump and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you may also have also seen me light a flare there. I still have it in my hand. Um, flares are very useful. Mm, but not for the things you probably would intend to use them. So we mainly use them to cancel animations. Um, if Lara falls from a certain height, she would stumble. But if we throw away a flare first, that animation takes priority and we completely cancel the stumble. There are some other applications which we will point out when we get to them, but here is like one of them. So here we would stumble, but since I discard the flare, um, no such stumble, saves like two seconds yeah. per such cancel. And we're getting a bit uh, bothered by some animals here. That's okay. You can barely see. So for some reason, the health bar in this game is not very large. Uh, it's actually hiding in the top left corner. <laughs> yeah, it does not scale with the resolution size. So if you play it on the lowest resolution, uh, resolution it's pretty big. But <laughs> yeah. the bigger you make it, the smaller it gets. And uh, here we're supposed to kind of shimmy um, around the left side. You can see kind of like a small crevice there. But it's actually faster to kind of take a dive there and wade a bit through the water. You could see it's pretty slow to wade through water, so we kind of want to avoid it, but in this case it turns out to be faster. And what you will also see me do quite often is have my guns out despite not really using them. Do you remember why that is? Uh, they override the cameras. Exactly. So in, in these uh, alts there just now, there would have been a lot of forced camera perspectives and they really uh, screw up your movement because you lose perspective of where you are or where you're going. So you get pistols out and the uh, cameras stop. Exactly. When you're standing still, you also turn a lot faster when you have the guns out, but we are not going to use that too often. Also, I'm going to save here because I know if I don't save, I would probably mess up this uh, sequence here. So you can land pretty uh, precisely on this thing, but just to be sure, because as you might see, this uh, valley beneath me is pretty big and I don't want to fall down there. There's um, a T-Rex down there. There is at least one T-Rex down there, that's correct. Um, and that's actually already the end of the first level. Now, one thing you saw me there is saving, and there's actually no auto saves or anything like that in the classic Tomb Raiders, which is good because you can pretty much save wherever you want, but it's also bad because if you don't save, you go back to your last save. And uh, that's the reason why, at least in a marathon setting, I will save a bit more often than I'm used to, or hopefully I remember to save a bit more often. Yeah. And back in the olden days, <laughs> <coughs> if oh you wanted boy. to submit a speedrun and count it as official, you had to actually do the whole game without saving and loading. Yeah. Now, I was not running classics back then. Uh, I was one of the new game runners, but I, uh, yeah, certainly heard quite a few things about that. Yeah, some of the old boys were very hardcore. <laughs> but then we got them to change the rules and more people actually enjoyed <laughs> playing the game. <laughs> um, yeah, so we were in Venice now. Um, at the end of the Great Wall, there was this huge red gate, um, which seals away the Dagger of Xi'an, which is the main artifact this game revolves around. Whoever plunges it into their heart becomes a dragon, which is probably helpful for certain endeavors. Um, so Lara is kind of racing against this 
Italian cult to obtain the dagger. Uh -huh. um, the gate is sealed, so we can't get to it yet, but there are certain keys or key-like items one has to collect to get to the dagger, and uh, that's kind of the summary of the story. And we will go into a few other places, so these next few levels will be in Venice, and then there will be a longer segment where it will be uh, like underwater, in the Adriatic Sea, and then we're off to Tibet, and then back to China. Well, that's not supposed to be a political statement, but whatever. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I noticed too late. <laughs> but yeah. Um, here we are supposed to use the first um, vehicle. It would be a speedboat, but as you can see, I don't have it. There are mines here that are supposed to block you. Um, and there's this gate that is also supposed to block me. But I will try my best to not get blocked. But for this, we will uh, do a small setup here. You would usually have to push like a bottom at a bottom, 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 button <laughs> <laughs> at a different part of the map to open the door, and you can only get there fast enough with the boat. But uh, we can glitch through walls and yeah, stuff you can like see that. Lars a bit skewed right now. And if we wiggle against the gate, and we are going through the gate, and we end up in the boat we were supposed to use to get through the gate. Also, that level end jiggle is very nice, but we will not hear it anymore because from this level onwards, when we finish the level and start a new one, it immediately cuts out, which is a bit sad. Uh, here is the next kind of... This is a stair bug. Um, by going against uh, steps and against walls, uh, you can get her to do the stepping up, uh, the step animation, and then sometimes it just glitches you through the wall. And here it gets dark, so we'll use a flare, but uh, we'll also use it. Uh, in more convenient ways for us later on. Um, now we kind of have to get out of this room again, but as you saw, we did the stair box, so now we have to kind of do the same thing in reverse on this step here. Now flares, they only last for 30 seconds, something Oof. like that. I do not know the exact number. I, let's pretend I know exactly, and it's 30 seconds. Um, so I'm kind of on a timer here, but I still want to line up this jump. I need to grab this balcony. Right. Then and hopefully still get the flare. <laughs> yes. So that's also why I'll put down a save here. Um, yeah. This is not supposed, like you're not supposed to get to this part this way, but yeah. Okay. Ignore the dogs. And now uh, here is another thing you can do. So I will shoot out the windows. I will ready a flare, and then there is a fence here. There's a little hole there. But uh, there is also no fence there, so that's good. Yeah, so you can jump through some very thin objects like fences and that in certain places with certain angles, but that's about all I can say. And then there will be two guys here. I'm somewhat low on health, so I'll probably use a med pack. Okay. Yeah, I'll right. Right. <laughs> not going to risk that. No, that would have not worked. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there are two types of medkits. Small ones heal you for 50% and large ones just heal you. Oh. And here uh, he drops a flare very close to the wall and then uh, Lara tries to pick it up and by the pickup animation you kind of block back into the wall a little bit and you get put on top of it. Exactly. And that allows us to finish the level early. You're supposed to detonate like parts of that wall. And uh, yeah, we don't have to do that. And here at the start of this level, we'll actually do some uh, precise, well, not precise, but pre-planned uh, actions, because here we do what was called a glitchless glitch, which is an amazing name. I hate uh, that. Yeah, same. <laughs> but yeah, you can kind of get stuck on like seams of wall, uh, certain blocks. And if you hold the roll key while doing that, you also get put on top. Yeah. And here he's setting up another step buck and fails. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. Uh, wanted to show it's what part happened. Of the setup. Exactly. It's part of the setup. But yeah, the, the classic Tomb Raider games have a lot of these uh, setups that look really weird, but because uh, the, the movement is very deterministic, uh, you can use uh, very precise setups to set something up that you would never be able to do, uh, really. Exactly. So here, I'm just gonna drop down here, ignore the 
glass, it definitely will not hurt me at all and drain half of my health bar. And then we can just squeeze through that small uh, part there, through the elevator. And here um, we'll actually skip uh, the majority of this level, the Opera House, with this simple jump here. And by simple I mean I would never fail this, exactly. <laughs> no reason why I saved there. And with that there is just a few more jumps we have to do. And then we're uh, out of Venice, and there is not too much to talk about here. So, Tali, if you want to take over. Please, I was uh, sure. going to ask uh, if I could intrude, because we have a huge donation here. We have Head Dragon with $750. <laughs> the donation just says brr, but this does go towards the Tomb Raider incentive of locking Winston in the freezer, <laughs> which means that the incentive has been met. And of course, they also put part of it towards uh, the bonus game of Amnesia coming up. So we're actually getting quite close on that too. But yeah, thank you so much. That is amazing. Uh, and we also have $50 from someone right behind you in the audience. Jan oh, Break, of course, saying, Hey, Kata, you cutie. Finally, I'll be able to watch a run without resets. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Not much I can say. <laughs> As a point. Uh, thank you very much. Um, it was a little rude. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, <laughs> I'm used to worse. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so we don't have our pistols right now. That's not. Yeah, this is one of the great. classic uh, tropes yeah. uh, levels. You get captured, you have nothing, get it back. Exactly. Um, this door is on a timer, but it's like, yeah, as long as you don't really bonk anywhere, you're gonna make it out. But uh, this is the first level that introduces one of the uh, more infamous glitches when it comes to the classic Tomb Raiders. Uh, that's being the Quop glitch. Yep after the famous Quop running game <laughs> that everyone knows, of course. Of course. Because we're very creative, and the animation kind of looks like that game, so we named it like that. Mm -hmm. And we're definitely also not boomers uh, who played that <laughs> game in <laughs> 2000, maybe, was it even 2000? I think so. I've, that might have been still 90s, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but first, a small fence block here, hopefully. Yeah, good. Very nice. And then there are two guys here. Uh, one of them drops a key card, one of them drops... Well, one of them first should show up. Okay, there he is. This guy drops a large medkit that I don't really need, but if he... Eh, that's yeah, that's too far. <laughs> yeah, you can kind of manipulate them so they drop their items right next to each other so you wouldn't have to do two pickup animations, but that's okay. And this uh, key part here, he's going to use to set up uh, the quap glitch that we mentioned. That's why he made a save just before activating it, because you know exactly the position you are in after using this, and then with some seemingly random movement, you can get Lara into a perfect position where you can do a jump where you hit the, was it the wall and the ground at the same time? Uh, which activates the Quop state. You can't see it right now, but the next time he jumps, uh, you will see what we mean with Quop. Which would be right now. There you go. And uh, this allows you to glide through the floor, and once you reach certain doors, you can grab, and when the co-op state ends, which is after a certain amount of seconds, you just go through the door. Uh, this is probably not a smart idea what I'm doing here, but... So we need this guy in a very specific position, uh, which I'm not sure this is. Uh, <laughs> uh, because he drops better. a medkit, and if it's very close to a wall, you can use that to glitch into a wall, which sets up the next trick no, here. I don't think it, yeah, uh, that's why I did the save there. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, but yeah, we try to glitch into the wall by killing the guy very close to it, and then we can uh, use the wall to um, flicker along it, basically, by being inside it. That looks better. So usually you're supposed to fill this... Okay, I'll do it one more time, and then I just do the other strand. Usually you're supposed to fill this hole here with water by doing some kind of elaborate stuff, um, but that's what we're trying to skip here. Not only killing the guy at the wall is uh, kind of hard, but also this part here where you have to set up the exact angle, because if you move too far, yeah, whatever. you get out of the wall and if you don't move far enough, it won't work. That's a shame, but instead we get to do another glitchless glitch. So. That's a trade-off. Because that makes sense. Uh, here we bypass an enemy trigger. So basically, the triggers are always kind of 
blocks. Block base. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you, you can kind of barely make it through uh, the wall to not trigger them, and in that case, yeah, the enemy doesn't spawn. Was this the switch to fill the water? I don't. Well, it kind of moved the water from one pool to the other. Yeah, uh, okay. I didn't yeah. get the jump either. Uh, all this going well. <laughs> yeah. So now this pool has water, but the next one does. Does not, yeah. which is also a problem. Exactly, and I totally remember this uh, backup and strat. So this used to be the strat. Uh, you can do a jump here, which is also very precise, hence the careful movement here and the pause buffering. But you can just make the jump and grab this ledge without dying. There we go. Uh, and and yeah. you can tell... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you can tell there's supposed to be water here because, yeah. Yeah, the, the game does not expect you to get there without the water. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that took a bit longer, but that's okay. So we're just going to make our way out of this level into the next one, where we'll have a bit of a rotating blade problem at our hands. To our left, there is quite the, there is, there is a strong current in this pool. You yeah. might not be able to tell it too well. You can but hear it, maybe. Yeah. But there's a turbine going, and if you don't move exactly in the, in the way that he is doing, you get sucked into it. Exactly. And then there is a somewhat small platform here we can use, and these guys definitely always cooperate. Yeah, as I told you, they always cooperate. Yeah. And this pool might or might not be filled with acid. <laughs> and here is the biggest lever that I've ever seen in any video game. Uh, you won't be able to appreciate uh, actually, okay, with the camera kind you can, kind of. Uh, but it goes up really high, but luckily we can skip it all. Like that. Yeah. I think if you climb it, it's like one and a half minutes of just <laughs> climbing it. And all yeah. you do is just hold the key. Exactly. So climbing animation is really, really slow. We will get to see a bit of it later on, but in general we try to, to obviously skip stuff like that. Uh, here I'm going to leave that guy alone for now. I want this key card. And I have to backtrack up to the top now, which means we have to go to the ladder again. Yeah. So in, if you played this without glitches, you would have to climb the ladder twice. <laughs> but luckily, we're not restricted. And so we're already halfway up the ladder. And you might think we would climb yeah. it up, but it's actually faster to just go down and glitch up again. Oops. There we go. And now we still have this guy here, so he will drop the automatic pistols. Hopefully without pushing us off the platform, that's very nice, good. And after he opens this door, uh, we're gonna have to do another setup for another co-op glitch to get through the second door. Yeah, so there will actually be two co-ops here, one to open a door, in the corridor and want to get into the kind of final corridor. I don't know. You'll yeah. see. We're so trying to get past two doors. Exactly. <laughs> so you'll see some more voodoo here. And then uh, hopefully, yeah, that looks good. Yeah, and then with some precise timing again, uh, you can make all of this work. Yeah, so we'll use the gun drawing animation here to time. The door is actually very helpful here because you can't uh, glide against any surface. Uh, if you glided against a normal wall, that would not work. But the doors luckily have special properties. Yeah, and so once you're in the co-op like, animation, you have eight seconds until you kind of shift underneath the floor. And that's uh, why we have to kind of time it there. Because for if you run against the second door that we skipped, you would pop out. So you kind of have to be in that quicksand animation when you're approaching it. And now we're trying to get into that thing just ahead. Yes, so we're actually going to take the scenic route. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and here we are. So now all that's left to do is go to the end of the level, and then there will be a longer swimming segment. So to Tali, go ahead. Thank you so much. We have a lot of love coming in here. We have an anonymous $50 donation saying, nearest neighbor texture filtering enjoyers approve of this stream. And also the freezer incentive. 
That was, of course, one of the donations that helped us meet that. Uh, we also have $5 from Salmon Sushi saying, Hey, Caddy, remember that you're incredible and that I can't wait to hear the passport sounds non-stop during this run. Do your best, my friend. We also have $5 here from John Raider saying, It's booming time. We have $15 from Ollie.jpg saying, I love the angry passport noises. Good luck with the run, Caddy. Uh, and then we have another $50 here, which calls attention to something you may have noticed yourself too, but it's of course Ball saying, so close to that 5K, I'm doing my mm. part. And yeah, we are really close, just another $58 away. And we also have $25 here from Medio saying, just wanted to say hi, Caddy, and good luck gaming. Can we hit that 5K during Tomb Raider? That would be amazing. That should be very doable. Everyone who donates is amazing anyways. Thank you very much, my friends. What's up with all these donations? Uh, <laughs> I need to load and save so much. Uh, uh, yes, I might reset once in a while when I'm streaming this game. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Damn. But yeah, uh, Tomb Raider 1, 2, and 3, they all have this uh, very cool rotating menu. Uh, and Passport uh, sound. Exactly. So in Tomb Raider 4 and 5, you actually have, like, you instantly go into the save list when you press quick save, but uh, for these games you open the passport and then you select a save file and then the passport closes, so uh, you get used to that sound pretty quickly. Or you start hating it. <laughs> it's not mutually exclusive. All right, um, so we're making our way into the wreck of the Maria Doria, which yep. is... Uh, a ship that belonged to the father of the cult leader we're going up against. Uh, it's also upside down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I just want to point I that out <laughs> to the viewers. We're in an upside down ship right now. And to me, because I was not aware of it. Uh. Wait, really? <laughs> <laughs> you think I know what I'm doing? Look at the store, it's obvious. I have to actually look at my health bar right now. I'm on fire. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, um, there you actually put yourself on fire and just like take the damage and uh, open the door because luckily there is a pool of water right behind it. Very That's good, the yeah. only way you can put out fire or yeah, level transitions, but we're far from that. Um, yeah, so that cuts out having to deactivate the, the fire trap. Um, I Maybe some of you remember uh, when Tomb Raider 4 was speedrun at this event. Uh, there, Actually, you are also set on fire, but you have to maintain that state for like 10 minutes and keep on spamming medkits. So uh, that definitely did not give me any kinds of flashback. Yeah, but we do not have infinite medkits in this game. True, so yeah. Can't do that. Also, I haven't saved in forever, I feel. So let's do that here. some passport sounds for the fans. <laughs> they were practically the Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we're slowly approaching uh, somewhat of a problem, which is like the final or second to final room in this uh, level is like a huge, long, uh, vertical room that uh, is not very safe to fall down, unless you know how to fall down. Yeah, this is a new glitch that we haven't seen so far in this. I mean, it's not new, but it's new to this run now. Uh, if you land at the ground and the wall at the same time, you do not actually die and take full damage. And so. yeah, so the swan dive, which is kind of Laura's signature acrobatics move, I guess, really helps with that because it also moves you more forward. Yeah. And uh, in this room, I will also save, because here you can get uh, killed pretty quickly, or the guys can completely ignore you. Okay, they do definitely not ignore me. <laughs> yeah, that was a good health kit to use. Yeah. Uh, health management in this game, and in all of the games before Tomb Raider 4, is very important. Uh, can only... I mean, picking up a health kit always takes like two or three seconds, maybe even more. Uh, there is only a limited number of spots where you can pick them up uh, reasonably fast mm -hmm. and uh, especially in Tomb Raider 2 there's some areas where you just can't avoid taking damage if you want to go fast, especially towards the end of the game. Uh, so it is important that he picks up a certain num number of medkits and doesn't take too much damage in some areas. Exactly, so usually we just go for the ones that are 
right on our way, obviously. Um, I do pick up a few more, so that more than are technically necessary. But as I got alluded to, we are kind of preparing for the later levels where we need to kind of out-heal an onslaught of enemies yeah. poking us. So yeah, that's kind of what we're preparing for. And yeah, as he said, we don't want to waste too much ammo. Uh, ammo. It's that guy behind me with the huge uh, wrench, I only shot four times. So I'm kind of preparing. I'm getting him to low enough health so I can kill him in a precise spot next to the wall, which is also what this movement here is for. Kind of baits him on top of this crate. And then I want him to drop right here because he drops an item and picking up items we can use to embed into walls. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and on top of this particular piece of wall is the switch that we need to continue on. Yes. Now how this guy got here, <laughs> we have no idea. And we don't really care. Because now he can stay there. <laughs> yeah, he's stuck there forever. <laughs> yeah, so one very useful thing here is that you can actually turn the camera sideways because otherwise it's a bit difficult to tell where the platforms end. And luckily at the bottom here there is water, so we don't have to do any shenanigans. And now we just make our way outside of this ship actually because we need a key so we can get further into the ship. It all makes sense. Yeah, this is a actually kind of funny scene. You can look through these windows there to the left and see the key outside that you need to find. Yeah, somewhere, yeah, back there, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice that the ship is upside down now, though? No. Did you see the, <laughs> the steering? Right, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I thought it was like the periscope. <laughs> no, it's not a submarine. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know how ships work. <laughs> it's right there. Look at it. <laughs> okay, yeah, so this door is on a timer. Um, <laughs> getting exposed here. Damn. Did not prepare for that. Um, yeah, so that door is on timer. Once we're like in this room, the timer stops. So you can pick up that med kit, the... Um, Grunt in the previous room dropped on your way in here, but if you take too long, the door would slam shut. So I'm just gonna pick it up now. And of course, I forgot where it where you dropped it. <laughs> um, so going outside is actually a little dangerous. Uh, these are shark-ridden waters, um, and as we said before, med kits are important. Also, sharks do a lot of instant damage. They take like half your health with one bite, so that's another problem. Uh, hopefully they are nice. Sometimes they don't bite you at all. I also don't remember if I'm below 50% or not. So uh, <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> Good. We'll find out. Either I survive or I get uh, eaten alive. So. Yeah. But yeah, this is the key. Then we need to swim the same way back. Uh, what he did there, if, if you pick up an item, uh, you can click the flare, uh, like drawing a flare at the same time. And you draw a flare, but you don't actually use a flare. So this is a free flare, flare that he has right now, which we can use to cancel the next stumble animation. And the sharks played very nicely. Yeah, I actually, like, there are two sharks. I only saw one on the way back, so I was a bit confused. But I take it. It's OK. He was not hiding. Yeah. He was actually <laughs> just gone. <laughs> yeah, so as I said earlier, the flares run out after a certain amount of time. And this one actually cuts it quite close. Like, there is no way to really use it here. It's in the next room. So if you like bonk here anywhere for too long, you will just not, like the flare runs out right before you would need it. And there's a trap door that you can kind of jump through. Don't know why that works, but it works. Exactly, <laughs> yes. And here's the jump that we need the flare for. And then we can cancel that. That's, that's what we saved, yeah. those two seconds. <laughs> exactly. But it's a free flare, so yeah. might as well use it. Also, I still don't know how much health I have. OK, I had less than 50%. Okay. <laughs> and I, oh God, uh, I don't, oh, okay, I'll, I won't, yep. yeah, uh, okay, good idea. <laughs> the, the divers can be quite exactly. dangerous, yeah. and there's some fish here too. And now I'm below 50% again, so good call. That's what we pick up those extra med kits for. On the next level, uh, start in the water again, and there's a door that we could open with a 
switch, but the door is uh, also kind of particular because if you swim at it in a certain direction and angle, you can also go just go straight through it. And hopefully that works. Yeah, very nice. Like that. And that is the M16, and it's loud and good. The uh, strongest gun, yes. except for the grenade launcher. Exactly. Uh, again, we need to uh, reach a lever here, which we will. And uh, now this room that was briefly visible is clearly underwater, uh, which the game definitely expects it to be at this point, as you will soon see. There will be nothing wrong in that room. Hint, hint. <laughs> Not sure they saw it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hint, hint. <laughs> I better not run out of breath now. <laughs> I don't think that's a uh, problem here. <laughs> yeah, we're going to need to flip another lever, and then we can uh, make it out of this underwater part. Speaking of air, Lara has great lungs. Like, <laughs> I don't know how many minutes that is even, uh, but it's long. A solid time, yeah. Yeah. especially while doing pretty heavy physical activity. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm going to save here again, because there's a somewhat uh, precise setup for a glitchless glitch. Sorry that I have to use the name again. You could just <laughs> say GG. <laughs> yeah, that's, that makes it way more obvious. <laughs> and that the final part of this level, which is what we're approaching, is pretty nasty in terms of like the density of skips and tricks we do here is pretty yeah, high. So. I'll save a few more times probably, it is mm, uh, nice. Not that easy, that jump actually. Yeah, I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is a slippery slope as I just demonstrated. But if you jump from just the right spot, you kind of can get yeah. the climb up animation to override the sliding down properties. Yeah. Another flare cancel here, then there is a fence. Allegedly. And then here is a sketchy jump. Uh, need to maneuver some stuff to get over to that door there, but if you jump just the right spot, you can barely make it. But she did. Very nice. Yeah, that is actually way like more precise than what it looked. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy that went that well. And here. Uh, oh god, that's. Uh, to basically that is very not good. Yeah. Oh shit. Uh, well, I saved on the previous level, so I can just reel. Okay, okay. Th this guy's not we're the good, issue. Okay. The issue is the guy with the flamethrower behind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On the bottom level, there, there's uh, two guys with flamethrowers. Uh, they're very scary. Uh, as we said before, if you're on fire, you're pretty dead. Uh, uh -huh. But yeah, we started at the bottom of the ship here, and we need to climb it up. Uh, this is not the intended way, obviously. And then we need to get on top of this uh, red metal thing here, uh, which we can by clipping into a wall here. Oh good, he's coming. That work. There we yeah, go. Yeah, very nice. And then we get that key that we need to get to the end of the game. So now we go all the way back down. Yeah, you could kind of see like a, a hole in the ceiling there. Why am I pointing up? I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so you're supposed to take quite a detour there, and this allows us to just straight pop up out the top, collect the key, and now we're on our way back down. And as we mentioned before, the flamethrower guys are on this uh, level here yes. soon. So, hopefully they play nice, but usually you can kill them. Oh, I already see him coming. Oh, uh, okay. yeah, that's no, probably no, no, because no. of the start. Yeah. Uh oh. Don't Might do be it. able to Don't jump away. Do it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was close. It's okay. There are two more down here. But yeah, these one we should be able to take out from a distance. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. And behind that door is just the end of the game. Exactly. End of the uh, game. Le uh. Sorry. <laughs> level. Level, of course. <laughs> I wish. Uh, and then we go to uh, the mountains. Yes, the Tibetan foothills. Uh, probably the one level most people remember, if they got that far in the casual playthrough. 
and because this is where we will use the other vehicle, the Skidoo. Uh, and that you. is not good. Uh, let me save because now I have to run around the yeah, boulders. Up, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. And there is another set coming down here. Yeah, my jumps were supposed to not trigger them, but uh, oh well. The Skiddo is a hard to master vehicle, I would say. Oh. Uh, and we also do some difficult jumps and uh, whatnot with it. So this is an interesting section for sure. Also, that glass shattering has like no volume control, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, here I'll save because I'll do a somewhat risky jump and I kind of don't want to regret it. Uh, okay, that looks good. And you yeah. could see the skidoo there. Now, the main reason why people remember it is because it has quite a nice tune while driving it. Now, there is one member in the audience, I assume, who has a contrary opinion on that. I will not call them out because it would probably create quite a hostile environment, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> they should know that they're wrong. So you can now post your favorite dance emote in chat. It's quite a jam. Uh, here we're setting up a jump after this little hop. Uh, if we jump against that block, we're instantly dead. If we jump too far to the left, we're instantly dead. So, here we go. Nice. This is just generally the motto of Skiddo, by the way. Uh, if you fail something, you're probably dead. Uh, so, hopefully we don't see an explosion. <laughs> yeah, if you fall from like higher than, I don't know, one block of distance or something, you're instantly dead. Yeah. Come on, just... <laughs> <laughs> Some grenade launcher ammo. Which we actually only use once. <laughs> And the music actually makes me want to play the game. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like the one, like this is a super trap because there is a boost mode that I usually use to go faster. But if you boost down that slope, you die guaranteed because you just take off and yeah, explode yeah. on impact. We're going to park the skidoo here, foreseeing an event that might occur soon. Um, so in general, we just are all, we went all the way here just to collect a key to open the hut that we saw at the start, like where the skidoo was. That's the only reason why we go, go here. Whoops. We did something. Yeah, something happened, I guess. over yeah and also sadly it's not like Tomb Raider 4 where you when you re-enter the vehicle the music loops uh, sadly it's it's gone um, but yeah you can see the frozen lake here exploded or yeah it's not frozen anymore but there is a key here that Laura could please pick up there is a guy on a skidoo coming yeah and he can insta kill you yes he hits okay you. thank you we did it. Um, yeah, well, as long as you're in the skidoo, it's fine. But yeah, if someone in the skidoo touches Lara, she's instantly dead. There is another one coming. It does work the other way around, though. Yeah. So as you saw before, if we ran into the enemies, they also instantly die. Yes. And uh, now we make our way back. Yeah. Uh, without the music, sadly. Um, and since we know this area kind of, uh, Tali? Go ahead. Absolutely. So. I know we're not on a ship anymore, uh, but I do want to encourage everyone to get those donations in and also maybe include a ship back, because clearly it seems like Katarim needs to know a thing or two about ships. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have Sajiki here with $10 saying, hey everyone, ship connoisseur here. If the um, ship no. is upside down, why do you open the doors by turning the wheels counterclockwise? Just wondering. Appreciate the passport sounds. It's a good question. So clearly it's not upside down, is what he's saying. 
maybe it's both. <laughs> it's the upside down and it's also not upside down. Let's go with that. Yeah. Um, so sadly, we abandoned the... Uh, okay, we abandoned... <laughs> <laughs> that was also set up, clearly. We no, abandoned just the wanted to sh here. show the snow leopard. <laughs> exactly. Definitely did not get stuck there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so now that we have the key, we can uh, open this hut, which allows us to open the gate behind the hut. So that was the only reason why we did all of that. But I think it was worth it for the music. And while we're in that hut, we will pick up some more ammo and medkits, and we will get ambushed, which now that I said it, kind of makes it not an ambush anymore. Um, but we will kind of just ignore the ambush. Uh, if I could pick up the medkits. Yes. You might see them run by the window. Uh, yeah, you kind of saw them there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Calm down there. And since we're off our skiddo, uh, we have a bit of a problem here because there's going to be another guy on a skiddo. You can see where this is going. He's, he's kind of dangerous, so we need to get this guy in a very precise, precise spot so that he doesn't kill us. And we got it. Fun fact, if he drops off the thing and we run into it while it's still moving, we still die. Yes, and also this is not quite the same speedo, like type-wise. It does not have a boosting mode, but it has uh, machine guns, which are completely useless to us. Yeah. Except for this... Killing these two guys. Exactly, that's the only <laughs> reason why we need them. <laughs> and yeah, as I said, as long as you're in the skidoo, they can run against you pretty much as long as they want. But once you're by yourself, instantly dead. And here we want to park the skidoo in a somewhat precise spot on the right side here. Yeah. As we said before, the game does not want objects to be inside of things. So the moment the block uh, stops moving and gets into the spot, uh, the skidoo basically goes on top of it. And we can just go through this. Uh, should I heal? They can still hit uh, me here. They won't do enough damage with one hit. I don't think so, no. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Fair Fair enough. Enough. Safe to make. <laughs> uh, can I butt in real quick? Of course. Of course. Because we just hit 5k! Woo. <laughs> and the donation that put us over 5k was Drunken Shoe with $48 saying 5k, 5k, 5k. Also, Kata, did you know the ship level was upside down? <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry, you're never going to I was about to say thank you. It uh, <laughs> did me a great service there. I uh, thought it was obvious. <laughs> teaches me to just always uh, agree with you. All right. Yeah. Um, so we're not supposed to be on the other side without breaking the glass here first, which is why we have to kind of do this weird jump against it thing. But if you do it enough time, you clip through it since it's a pretty thin wall. And so we'll do the same thing later on. Cool thing about the level is these monks, uh, we're not enemies with them. And as long as you don't shoot them, they stay your friends. Uh, and they will only fight the bad guys, but not you. Uh, yeah. Which is, if you're casually playing this, actually kind of important. Because once you get into the level, you see them fighting with the bad guys. And if you just start shooting, you shoot the monks as well, and then they hate you. Exactly. So don't do that. <laughs> and here he's going to clip through the wall to skip a trigger for uh, a rock. Boulder, yeah. And yeah. We'll not skip this one. This one doesn't matter. Yeah. And to get out of this level, we need five? Five praying wheels, right? Some unspecified number. Okay. But we need <laughs> praying wheels. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We can count at the end and see if it was correct. <laughs> right. And this is also a thing that happened a few times already. So we can jump through like where blocks and why am I trying to pick something up here? It's just a trigger. I don't even know why I pressed interact. Yeah, we can jump through corners if it's exactly. like uh, the block is meeting the wall at a certain spot. Also, the game can crash here if the monk and the bad guy like die in the same position. So just in case, it doesn't look like it will happen, but uh, it has happened, so I'll rather be safe. And now we have one praying wheel. And a ladder. Uh, 
and this was the boulder, and these are the flares. Uh -huh. So each flare pack is six flares, I think. So we're kind of, we're, well, technically, yeah. In the optimized run, they're like perfectly planned out. I do not use like perfect strats, obviously, for such a run. Um, but we will still pretty much come down to the wire when it comes to the. Is save it here because that was another safe uh, uh, setup for a drop where you hit the wall and the ground at the same time. And it worked. <laughs> that was the monk. Oh, yes. Or is that the bad guys? <laughs> no, 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 no. That was that was the monk, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now we're in the room with the uh, praying wheels. So usually you need five or some number, but uh, use this praying wheel in the menu, and then go to one of the empty spots uh, and try to activate. Uh, you just go back to the menu here and use the praying wheel that you don't actually have anymore. Yes. And she puts it in. And that makes sense. Of course. Yes. So that was two, that's three. Yes. With our one praying wheel that we don't even have anymore. Nope. I guess you were right, five. It should be only the one on the other side. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So you have to always go manually. In so if you interact with this thing, it immediately puts you in the items menu and this technique would not work. Um, but if you go like manually first into the inventory and then to the items screen, then for some reason this key, which usually is supposed to rotate and not be used on those receptacles, just works. And that allows us to skip pretty much the entire rest of the level. Yep. And uh, now we're in the level where uh, we see some people that are definitely not dressed up for Halloween. I don't know what that is, but apparently it's a, it's a yeti. Can That's you please? Yeti. Thank you. Okay. Like, <laughs> like how he didn't even hit you, actually. <laughs> yeah, usually he does. Uh, there is another cat here, kitty cat. That is way more dangerous than the person in the chicken suit. <laughs> Chicken is <laughs> fun. Okay. And uh, some more boulders. So the next key that we have to pick up is actually this mask. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. And then there's going to be a section where we uh, I don't hold like down a position. lot of meters. And it's very precise drops actually so that we don't die. Hopefully. But we get shot yes, at the same time. Yes, exactly. And then <laughs> you do That's not why have you save. <laughs> and you don't have enough health and you die. That looks slightly preferable. Yeah, that's much better. And then I almost jumped into the pit with the spikes. <laughs> At the top of this ramp, to my right, there is a trigger that spawns some uh, more snow leopards, so I want to avoid hitting it, otherwise they would now come around the corner, which I don't. Um, but I need to get on the other side of that wall to my left there, which I will do by going to the top of this structure. Oh god, I got this camera. It's uh, a bit of a sketchy jump, since yeah. you can't quite see where you're going, but it's fine. Yeah. And I should have enough health where I can just drop down in the final room as well. Never mind, it's blinking now, so blinking I just have not thing, enough yeah. health. Yeah, so I have to do a slightly slower way of just grabbing the ladder and slowly dropping down. Which brings us to uh, the level with the trampolines. Yeah, that's For a very fun mechanic. Reasons, yeah. <laughs> but it can also be super frustrating exactly. because it's kind of hard to figure out. Uh, and you usually die <laughs> if you don't do it correctly. Oh, yeah, I don't like that position either, but yeah. then we'll see. That's oh, fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, by grabbing midair there, we can glitch into the wall again. Uh, go a little faster. Here, you're supposed to pick up that item, but uh, you can just jump onto it and the game thinks uh, you did whatever you had to do. Yeah, so we don't actually need to pick it up. Yeah. Go straight ahead. And uh, meet some more people in chicken suits. <laughs> a 
there's one. There is another one. And we will now just jump across here, <coughs> cutting out a pretty nice chunk. And uh, now our goal is to freeze this next small pond down there. Luckily there is a cauldron with lava or anything, something like that, ready for us to be used. Yeah. <coughs> Conveniently <laughs> placed. <laughs> Always glowing, being warm, <laughs> though it's cold here. I don't know. Let's go with it. Um, and when I exit here, I will be more angry person in chicken suit, but there are also icicles on the ceiling, which I kind of don't want to be impaled by, and they can push you into these, but uh, they were pretty tame this time around. Right. More traps. And since so far we skipped most of the climbing animations, we routed this speedrun just so you would have at least one long climbing <laughs> animation. Um, so while we're doing that, Tali, you can go ahead. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, we have some donations coming in here. We have Kaythil with $20 saying, time to beat Marco Bertoli, but do it fast. Great run, great fun, keep it going. We also have $25 here from a dear heart that says, we need Zelda playing Zelda. And if you're confused by that comment, it's because they put it towards one of the incentives, which is when the Legend of Zelda run happens, which is specifically the Wind Waker uh, <laughs> version, we will, might have a Zelda cosplay if we can meet this incentive. So do if you also want to see Zelda playing Zelda, make sure you donate towards that. Uh, and well, of course, we have Cass here with $5 saying, perhaps we were the ones who were upside down all along. Really makes you think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then we have uh, two people in a chicken suit, I guess. I don't know, it's just bigger. Uh, so, that's, I mean, it actually looks like a chicken. I'll give you that one. The other ones, I don't see it. Yeah, so this is the Guardian of the Italian, which is the key that unlocks the gate with the dagger. So we're now back in that room, and yeah. uh, this is where I will need to listen for some audio cues for quite a long time. Yeah. I don't know how to explain what will happen, it's and, uh, I, and I messed it up, so luckily I saved. But the, the, the level instantly starts with a setup to get into a very precise spot to get into the wall, and then once he is in that wall, he's gonna continue dropping in an endless void while doing certain inputs, which make him bump a couple of times, which he needs to count. And then it moves him along a certain direction and eventually we'll pop out at the end of the level and uh, finish it. And that's pretty much all I'm going to say because he's going to listen for audio cues in a second. Well, hopefully. Let's go with that. So this was just the first part. Good. Very nice. Yeah, we essentially traveled along the whole wall there through the endless void <laughs> and we're at the end of the game. Uh, level. Why do you keep saying that? I'm so sorry. 
Well, I mean, this one is closer to the end of the game. Yeah, this is very close to the end of the game. So this is floating islands, uh, very weird. Like, it gets super spacey in this level. Uh, it's a bit of a sketchy level. First of all, there's this flying guy here. Uh, that we need to make drop down. But he will come back. But we need him to drop down so we can glitch into this uh, pillar here. Uh, which gets us closer to the end. I can hear him coming again, but we're too fast. Uh, then we need to glitch into another wall. Coming right up. Uh, and then do some traveling uh, in the void again for a little while. And the audio cue there is basically Lara's stumbling animation because every time she stumbles, she moves like a little bit forward into the direction that we want. So uh, he's always counting the number of stumbles. That's why it was really important earlier to like not talk. <laughs> yeah. In this case, it also doesn't help that you have this like choir doing their ho oh, oh, thing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh god. Ooh, that's yeah. that's <laughs> not what I wanted. Well, let's do that again, I guess. But uh, this time. <laughs> Without the uh, choir, so it should be faster. <clears throat> Why am I doing this incorrectly? Okay. <laughs> I need this and then this and then th and then I messed it up again. Uh, that's not good. That looks better. Yeah. Clearly. So anyway, as Eidgott was saying, the audio cue... No. <laughs> And it's important that he has the right count, because if he's too far left, uh, he drops down there and dies. <laughs> Same thing for the uh, level before, just that it's like, I don't know, 30-something. Sure, this time. And once we get that last jump here, uh, that level is already finished. And get to the second last level, uh, which is pretty much just a boss fight level. And it's also the level where we got all the medkits. Um, there's a lot of enemies here, and it takes a lot of time to kill them. And we only really need to kill one guy to get a key to get to the final boss. Uh, and that's going to be in this next room here. We're going to ignore all of these people. They're going to be chasing us. And then in this room, there's like, I don't know, seven guys or something. And then to the left here, in a second, there's going to be one guy that has the key. And that's the only guy we kill. And we're going to have to like run away from these guys, pick the item up, and open the door and hopefully uh, don't run out of medkits until then. <laughs> yeah, so we need this uh, cracker waffle or whatever it is. Uh, well, oh, oh my god. Yeah, you can easily get stuck on them here. I can also push you away, but once yeah. you're in this animation, you're stuck. So they can also... I did not have any small medkits left. Whoops. Okay, should be good now. We should be fine now, yeah. yeah that's it. And we do not need any more medkits here. Uh, it's just the dragon now that we need to kill, which is not a problem at all because uh, we can use this pillar here to block his attack and just uh, kill him with the grenade launcher. It's a very unspectacular yeah. boss fight. <laughs> it's very anticlimactic, but yeah, this is kind of the guy we've been chasing all along. So he used the dagger on himself to become this dragon, and as you can tell, it helped him tremendously. Yeah. And then. Uh, you actually have to pick up the dagger, because he would get revived after a little while. But now he's dead for good, and we got the dagger. And now everything comes apart and you just have to escape. And it's important to go straight here, because otherwise you might run into a flame. Yes, <laughs> but sometimes there is also rubble coming down there, so you kind of have to be aware of what you're doing. And you can stumble here, which would make you die to the yeah. Yeah, rubble behind you. But we're good. And then you think, yeah, well, game over, you're back home, but not in this game. No. Nope. In this game, the bad guys are like, well, fuck you, we're gonna get you anyways. <laughs> so they attack you in your own house while you're sleeping and admiring well, the dagger. Well, not quite sleeping. But uh, well, about Close to, yeah, about exactly. 
And she's yeah. in her nightgown. She's exactly. like, yeah. let's go to sleep. And then these guys show up. But luckily, she's prepared just for this case. Yeah, of course, uh, as any adventurer, she has like a weapons chamber right next to her bed <laughs> with a bit of shotgun ammo and everything. Yeah, a bit, as you can see in the <laughs> lower right <laughs> just, corner. Just, just a little bit. <laughs> and the bad guys don't know what's coming for them. Yeah, so there are 15 enemies we need to kill to spawn the final boss. Um, some of them are already spawned in, some of them only trigger when you get to certain points, and we need to kill all of them. We can't just skip those that would... Okay, I actually... Okay, that's an interesting... Let's call this a new route. Yep. Uh, okay, I just want to go over the railing. You're just yes. manipulating I... the positions, doesn't <laughs> it? <laughs> Clearly. Yes, this is going perfectly. Uh, yep. I also know where I am. Okay, good. Yes. Anyways, so now we go here to spawn the next guys, and now, yeah, as I said, this is basically just going through the level, yeah. checking all the, the enemies, and then triggering the final boss fight. So until then, Tali, you have your final opportunity. All right, I'll, then I will call it. We have another $20 donation here from Damaho. Uh, there is no comment for it, but it is, of course, going towards the Zelda playing Zelda Bid War that we recently talked about. And I guess this is also my last chance then to plug that we do have an upcoming incentive for a bonus game. So after Halo 2, which is coming up later today, if you want to see Amnesia the Bunker, we're over halfway there already. So get those donations in and make sure that we can see it because it's a really cool run. Speaking of donation incentives, uh, thanks to your generosity, we just walked past the kitchen where we're going to lock in uh, Winston yes. uh, into the fridge. But that has to wait until we get rid of these bad guys. Which Winston is not helping us no. fight, by the way. <laughs> like, where is he? I mean, to be fair, he's probably not quite on his, in his physical peak, as we will see. But uh. Yeah, but like, come on. He's a butler. He needs to help us. <laughs> Contractually obliged. So that's why we put him in the fridge. And uh, yeah, this is the final boss. It's super spectacular, almost as uh, spectacular as the dragon fight. But I guess at least he technically would fight back. Except yeah. that he didn't. And that is it? Nah, I mean, we still have the very important cutscene here. Oh yeah, right. It technically ends at the end of the cutscene. Yes. Uh, so that was Tomb Raider 2. Ish. Don't you think you've seen enough? We somehow made it. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> um, yeah, so we could listen to like the good tunes, but we also could not do that. Uh, or I could just talk and like gain some time for the tune to play. Um, but yeah, so, sadly, I don't think we can skip out of this. So yeah. I probably have to. Have to shut but I'm not sure if I relaunched the game. Is it still the same position? Did you move it when you started? I don't remember. <laughs> okay, then let's. Uh... <laughs> I don't. How long is? I this? don't think it takes too long. I think it's like maybe a minute, right? Uh, not even at this point. Yeah, no, then, no, then let's just try to run before we screw up the yeah, alignment. Yeah. I don't want to make tier two too many. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah. So what will happen is we will go into the uh, Croft Manor level, which is kind of an extra level you gain access to from the start um, in the main menu. It's supposed to act as kind of a tutorial level where you kind of like get introductions on how to move, how to jump, how to do special actions. And uh, now we should be able to... Yes. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Sub 1 in game time, anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Lara's home. This is Winston. Yeah. He's uh, not very fast, as you might be able to tell. Yeah, um, but he always follows you wherever yeah, you go. Exactly. He's a good but butler. <laughs> Un unless very it's local. nighttime and he's <laughs> not there for some reason. Yes. <laughs> um, luckily, we cannot abuse that at all. Um, and as I got so graciously pointed out, there is a door here, but sadly it's it's locked right now. So we need to first unlock it. Um, so we need to get into the manor first, and then unlock that. Feel free to explore the door. rest of the house and garden. Thank you, Lara. Yeah. So <laughs> I will do just that. <laughs> um, so that's the main gate where we just fought. Ding dong. I, has it always been there? I'm not sure I heard that ding. Yeah, I was also a bit confused. <laughs> uh, I mean, now I know, but when I was practicing, I i mean, I also don't really do this too often. All right. Uh, this is the freezer. And uh, this is the gate that will now open. And then we just have to wait for Winston, Should who is here. definitely hurrying along. Oh, God, where is he? Oh, there he is. Oh, okay. oh he's coming. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so the reason why this is kind of a thing is that no matter who you ask, pretty much, when... Well, first of all... No matter which country, which exactly, age, it doesn't yes. matter. First of all, when you say, well, Tomb Raider 2 or 3, it's, the first question is, always, oh, is that the one with the manor? Yeah. And when you say yes, then the <laughs> follow-up is, oh, you say, yeah, I always lock the butler in the freezer. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, this has become such a phenomenon that uh, in one of the most recent games, uh, which was, I think, Rise of the Tomb Raider? I'm not sure. It's like a... No. I don't know. One of them. There's an Easter egg in the Croft Manor level there where you can kind of see the, like, uh, the diary of the, the butler and he said like the small child locked me in the freezer again today. And oh really? Yeah, okay. it's actually really cool. That um, is very cool. But yeah, as you can tell, he's... Uh, he, we should be hearing him soon. He, yeah, yeah. He, you will hear the, the, uh, the cups <laughs> on the tablet. So, yeah. Bringing us tea. Yeah. Hopefully as, warm. As he should, as a butler, yeah. right? Is he stuck? I really hope <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, 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 okay, oh, okay, okay. He's coming, he's coming, he's yeah. coming. We got it. Yeah, now you can hear him. Oh. Uh, and, yeah. Any second now. We'll just do what everyone else <laughs> who's ever played this game it's, did. It became canon, basically. Yeah. You have to... It, I think it kind of became a tradition as well. If you did a really good run, everyone in the <laughs> chat just asked you to like, lock the butler in the freezer. Oh, oh. Uh. <laughs> steady, steady. Hello, Winston. Don't spill it. Uh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was it for real. Thank you very much, Eidgott, for the commentary. No, It was a lot you. of fun. Yeah. Thank you, Issei, for having me. Um, yeah, that's all I, I have, pretty much. Anything you want to say? No, I don't have anything. No. And thank you for the <laughs> education during the... Of the course, run. you're welcome. <laughs> now you know how boats work and how they're supposed to be orientated. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the marathon. Bye.